Right then, I'd like to grab your attention, uh, bring your attention to this valve here, which is uh, Park Shunt, and it's bolted to the chassis with two set screws. The chassis is about half the thickness of this, so the uh, I beam itself is about five mil thick. Okay, so that's an Orbrems arrangement. This one's a Wabco. We call it a tin can valve. Okay, which is Park Shunt, and it has an RE arrangement, which is emergency relay. Okay. Fault with it was it was leaking air back through the red line when the red line was taken off okay and the brakes wouldn't come on. Now what the problem here is I will show you this these blind holes are blind holes okay whereas this bolt you can see how long it is was bolted into the valve okay and the body on this valve uh, is actually where the bolt should stop okay so this was screwed all the way down and that cracked into the valve okay and uh, it was hampering the uh, <laughs> operation of the valve itself yeah so i'll just show you here it goes right the way through that is incompetent for somebody we can't trace who done that okay and uh, this has been fitted and there's no history of it we have a history of everything we do in our workshop and across our dealership so not a good one not a good one at all very very dangerous moral of the story is really at the end of the day guys check what you're bolting into on your valves because if you could put a long bolt through a valve sometimes it'll crack it and it could be a life or death situation couldn't it Okay, guys and girls hello welcome back this is citric acid which clears lime scale out of kettles yeah okay a little bit of a demonstration here you put a little bit in a kettle and then boil the kettle what happens is the lime scale will uh, get dissolved and you'll have a clean kettle so what's the point of that well kettles boil quicker don't know if they're cleaner so uh, it will literally strip off all the lime scale so uh, you get a nice clean heating plate and of course if you're using filtered water as well you get a nicer uh, cup of tea obviously that's a luxury but some of you are spoilt at work aren't you yeah just a handy hint especially for apprentices right then guys let's talk about the tapping hammer yes this seems to be a uk thing doesn't it for commercial vehicle technicians and i'm not sure whether anybody else in the world uses it but we use the tapping hammer for assessing loose components especially wheel nuts as such yeah and it's a surprise for some foreigners that come to work with us that we have to do such inspections with such a tool but it's a traditional thing that most guys that do inspections and everybody should do a safety inspection before they commit to doing any repairs on a vehicle and of course it isn't the only tool in the inspector's arsenal because you cannot measure tread depths with a tapping hammer, can you? So here we're going to enter the concept of the solid gold tapping hammer, the inspector's tapping hammer. Wouldn't that be great if you were given one of these at the end of your life? could be an investment as well it's one of those tools and possibly the only tool in your box that would increase in value over the years. However, it is only symbolic because gold is too soft and it wouldn't make the right tapping noises, would it? So, we use it as a symbol of power and achievement and competence. This would probably be the best way to do and to perceive this in your head, okay? So, enter the Urtec certificate okay which you get a card for once you've had an assessment and passed the assessments this one's mine inspector technician a large commercial vehicle which you can see my attack number and also the date it expires in december 2024 the card is only issued if you are competent at inspecting commercial vehicles so what is urtec urtec actually is an acronym it's an abbreviation that you can almost make a word out of. But the license is a qualification developed for the vehicle technicians in the HGV, PCV and trailer sectors. Yes, there are divisions apparently in different sectors. This is a technician on their website, a picture of, and he's probably trying to work out how to pipe up some brake chambers to some valves. But there is a description there which will tell you what it's all about. It's basically independent accreditation which validates the competences of technicians working maintaining commercial vehicles, trailer and uh, PCVs. Yeah? 
So the IRTE is the Institute of Road Transport Engineers, which is us at the end of the day, and it is managed by the Institute of Motor Industry, which is the IMI. You'll probably have seen that on some of your qualifications if you went to Mech Tech or you'd been assessed in the workplace with your MVQs. Okay, so uh, on the website it says here, we have almost 1,900 accredited technicians, which is tremendous. We are very proud to be the first manufacturers to achieve this dependently assessed standard throughout the network. Our customers value the high standards accreditation fosters, and that's from Nigel Beckett, DAF Trucks, yeah? And it's true, we have Ertec certificates. The whole idea behind this is to show any fleet operators and customers that we are competent at doing our job of inspecting vehicles, okay? And this is what we do. This is the bread and butter. Every service we get in, every MOT inspection, we go through a routine, inspect the vehicle, assess it for maintenance repairs and serviceability as well as safety on the road, okay? So we basically work through to the MOT standards. So let's have a look at the licensing types and levels. You have service maintenance technician, inspection technician, advanced technician, and master technician, as well as large electric vehicle, high voltage isolation, reinstatement, and safety, okay? Now what we're gonna do is look at the inspection technician, which is a certificate card I showed you earlier. Mainly if you're working for a dealer or a franchise dealership, you will get training in the products that you're working on. Uh, except for trailer technicians, but this inspection technician qualification okay, is an, an add-on which you don't usually get if you go down the apprentice uh, route. Okay, so it's LCV, PCV and T, trailer technicians or HVT technicians. Yeah, so basically you need to be um, at least in the trade for three years have or have a level three qualification and one year's experience. But it says here the technician must be able to work unsupervised, which is unusual, unless it's an apprentice, which this is not really open for apprentices. This is open for guys who already got the qualifications, okay? So unsupervised is a bit of a loose term, I think, here. So basically the assessment, yeah, well, they come out to you and they see what knowledge you have. They don't train you. They watch and assess you to see if you can do a routine of inspection and this is what it's about it's a sensible routine there's no one correct way of doing it each guy will do a, uh, an assessment how they feel they should do it but as long as they can assess components for wear failure or serviceability that is what they are looking for and the knowledge to boot because of course when you look here you have underpinning knowledge, which is theory questions, okay? So your practical assessment is about an hour and a half, which is an inspection time anyway on a vehicle. And then an hour's worth of testing on uh, your MOT and uh, legislative knowledge, which of course you've got to know the tester's manual here. Now, when we got taken down to DAF the first time I got a qualification, we had an hour to read through the MOT testers manual, which we should know anyway, and then SATA tests. And of course, you've got to know all the ins and outs of how the side guards are and what details you need to get, as well as some of the CPC information, which is Certificate of Professional Competence, which a lot of it is common sense. However, when you're looking at vehicles, you have all of these legislations, whether it's the plate information or the tachograph information on the side here. And they do ask you, if you ever get assessed, is to print out the TACO. Okay, you've got to print out the TACO. So I know some guys have been in a trade a long time and they know what they're doing, but they've never been assessed on it. It's important because any legislation, you could get caught out on the side of the road or if you have MOT failures, it could be because the technicians don't really know what they're looking at or looking for. Whereas this guy here, which is Cobby, he is our QC and MOT man. He's the one who takes everything down to the MOT. So after he's done a QC, brake test and that, he will take them for test. He has a 100% pass rate. Not only does he know the legislation and the book, he also knows the ins and outs of getting the brakes right and we don't take anything to test if we know it's iffy or if it's not going to pass. Okay, so there we have a look, have a lock on the uh, third axle. 
brake rollers not everybody has but you have to be aware that when you're doing assessments that you do need to be able to show that you can test the brakes okay so looking for competencies is checking for serviceability at the end of the day and they will assess you on what you're doing and the routine is consistency so if you do one thing once then you do six of it for instance on a trailer it's the routine you go around and inspect everything now I do mine my way, Cobby will do his his way, and you will do yours your way if you're working in the industry, okay? And of course, the paperwork as well is vital, getting the details, putting them on the service sheets, and making sure the service sheets are there for the customer, for their records. You will be expected to work in a safe manner, so use your wheel chocks when you need to use wheel chocks, use axle stands when you need to use axle stands, not everybody has a brake roller set in their workshops. We do. We're, well, we're not lucky. It's just part and parcel of the service that we provide. But you need to be able to demonstrate that you have a knowledge, at least, of imbalances and how much braking force is required. Anything that is in the MOT tester's manual, you will have to know because you could be questioned on it. So I'm going to give you a heads up here. Harvey Wood Training and Assessment. He came out couple of years ago and assessed both our workshops in our region and he is really good but he only does inspection technician for large commercial vehicle and inspection technician heavy vehicle trailer yes they're two separate qualifications but lcv one will cover trailers as well the difference is between the first time I got my certificate, they just gave us the book, read, we had to read through it and then we were tested on it. Mike will actually go through this information first so you get a better chance and uh, cover some of the stuff that you may not know or you may have a misunderstanding about. Not everybody knows the whole manual, it's impossible and there are updates to this, but there are common things that are obvious to us anyway, it's just the other legislative part of it that may be a little bit confusing to some guys, so this is why Mike will help us out. And of course one of these things, and I'll tell you about this now, they always go for tyre markings, tyre sizes, types, speed rating and load rating, which is actually critical because a lot of guys don't really look at what they're... Uh, is written on the tyre so you've got to know this type of information of course Mike will uh, uh, point it out to you so you can then if needs be have a reference to the manual and go back to it okay so yeah speed and load ratings on tyres are vitally important and making sure that you have the right size tyre this will get you a golden hammer award won't it yeah the qualification is not a done thing you do have to show your competences in the workplace that you are capable of working to a standard this is what it's all about and as i said everybody has their own way of inspecting but there is standard ways of working on vehicles the safety the way you check things and this is what they're looking for as long as you spot the faults for rec before you do rectification and you know the difference between legalities and non-legalities this is what they're looking for so uh, it's worth it at the end of the day it's one day of your life you walk away with a certificate if you're competent enough and believe me some guys do fail if you know colin colin has done the urtech three times and he can't pass in fact, he's worked in so many different places that everybody knows him in our region. And the saying is, if Colin comes to work with you, don't give him anything technical. But of course, semi-skilled people are semi-skilled people. They still are valuable in a workshop either way. Okay, so basically, yeah, the Wheel Tappers and Shunters Club, I think it was at one time. I could tell you a story when I went to Lvov, I was in the hotel and I could hear the guy tapping the uh, train wheels and I thought, ah yeah, this is probably where the uh, wheel tapper and shunters club thing comes from. We've adapted that, haven't we, using the tapping hammer to uh, assess for loops, bolts and uh, loose components. And it's a done thing, isn't it, guys, at the end of the day, but you have to have the certificate, the card to prove that you can do the job otherwise it's just lip service isn't it the other bonus here for getting an urtech card is you can get 
discounts at Halfords. Yeah, well, actually, you just need to go into Halfords and uh, take your wage slip. I'd prefer to have discount at Tool Station because it's my favourite place at the moment. Yes, yeah, so have a butchers at the website if you're interested. There is more levels to be covered and you can be assessed if you don't work for a dealership like myself. And uh, the advanced technician, for instance, is a large commercial vehicle and bus and coach. This could be for uh, fleet technicians. There's a lot of underpinning knowledge you get tested on and then the practical assessments of these modules here, which is engines, mechanical systems, chassis, braking and electrical systems. It doesn't cover trailer stuff. Trailers are fairly simple because other than braking and lighting, it is a different ball game altogether. So uh, like myself, I do have experience with dry powder blowing equipment, both on the unit and on the trailer here, which you don't get assessed on. But it's one of those done things as sometimes you have specialists that are unqualified that know more than the qualified. Yeah. So anyway, having a gold hammer, you want some paint, don't you? And uh, this is possibly the only way you're going to get a real golden hammer. But this is only symbolic, as I say. So if you want gold hammer like this, just spray it up and uh, away you go. Yeah. If only this was made of solid gold. Yeah, I'd prefer to have a lump hammer that was made of solid gold because I would go straight away down to the goldsmiths and weigh it in and then retire and uh, go down to the Bahamas. But... This is a compromise, isn't it? Yeah, so a uh, golden tapping hammer, not really practical in the real world because steel is much better, isn't it? Yeah, so anyway, here is Mike's details, which if you want to uh, push your employer into getting you trained up, this guy is actually pretty good and uh, he has a little bit more education behind him than the uh, test guys that all they'll do is just shove a man in front of your nose get you to read it and then test you on it so uh, he's worth contacting keep the details get your boss to pay for it